With regards to pilots, the more skilled positions there, uh, Ed, uh, how much more needs to be done, I guess, to sort of get that back up to 100 percent or whatever statistically uh, would count as 100 percent? And more importantly, where are you finding that new pool, that new uh, group of pilots uh, that are going to take Delta into uh, the future? Well, Delta is the name that pilots want to fly for. It's the best brand in the industry, and it's the best place to work. And pilots have, have always uh, flown to Delta, flocked to Delta when they've had that opportunity. So we are, we are pretty much full in terms of the complement we've needed to hire. Right now, it takes time to train pilots and get them into the right categories, because every time you move one pilot, you displace and have to move somebody else. And so there's a daisy chain effect. Uh, at Delta, during the pandemic, uh, we, which was very different than some of the other airlines, had a very significant early retirement incentive for our people because we didn't know how long this was going to last. We had 20,000 of our people retire, including 2,000 pilots. We have hired the new 2,000 complement coming in, but as you can imagine, all of our new pilots start at the bottom, and the pilots that retired were off the top. And so in order to replace 2,000, you almost have to train 12,000 pilots that all get affected as everybody moves up into do new categories. So it takes time. Uh, by the summer, we'll be fully through that pipeline. And then we're going to be just in normal training, retirement, uh, management, and maintenance mode. So it's, it, we're, it, we're just on the cusp of it now. And by the summer, we'll be really good shape for next summer. And of course, Ed, when you've got the promise of profits to come and you share that in some way with those that you employee, I'm sure that's attractive, but I'm interested in the way the money pools go because you're also focused on paying down debt. But then we also see you make investments to the tune of, it's a, it's a small fry, but still 60 million not to be sniffed at for an equity investment in a company called Joby, which is kind of the future of travel to and from your airports. How do you think about making sort of blue yeah. sky big bets at this time? Well, it's interesting. This year, macro, uh, we're going to generate about $6 billion of operating cash, uh, which is phenomenal, coming right out of a pandemic. We had a double-digit margin in the second quarter, a double-digit margin in the quarter we posted last week, and we expect the fourth quarter to be a double-digit operating margin as well. So the business is doing well. Fuel prices, as you also know, are up to mm -hmm. record levels. They're up 50 percent to where they were pre-pandemic levels. So that's eating into a little bit of that profit, but the profit still is quite strong. We're using all of that cash that we generated to invest back into the business. New aircraft, the terminal here at LA, the new terminal facilities in New York at LaGuardia, JFK, uh, a minor, a relatively modest investment in the grand scheme of $60 million investment in Joby. Those are all long-lived assets. You've got to continue to invest in the future. And as business continues to gain and we get from 85% to 100% restored next summer, then that's going to drive an incremental level of revenue for us. Then we can start to pay down the debt that we took on during the pandemic.